Tonight, the climate crisis, the accelerated countdown to irreversible catastrophe. Rising temperatures and a new point of no return. Humanity is on thin ice, and that ice is melting fast. The warnings versus the global will. China's president lands in Russia to discuss Putin's war in Ukraine. A stalling tactic at best, that is not constructive diplomacy. The start of a high-level meeting in Moscow. Plus, stabbings at a high school in Nova Scotia on the first day back from spring break. I texted both my mom and my dad and like said I love you and I just put my phone away. The lockdown and the takedown. It was pretty scary. CTV National News with Omar Sachadina. Good evening, everyone. The first day of spring typically brings hope of warmer temperatures, but today it also coincided with a dramatic new warning about climate change, that a, quote, time bomb is ticking, and that a global commitment to limit warming to one and a half degrees Celsius will likely be broken. CTV's Annie Bergeron-Oliver on the urgent call to action and the dire consequences already in motion. From ferocious fires to devastating droughts, high-pressure hurricanes and powerful floods, emergencies fueled by climate change are happening more frequently. And a new report warns they're only going to get worse. Humanity is on thin ice, and that ice is melting fast. The United Nations Climate Report says a frightening future awaits if the fight to combat climate change is not drastically scaled up this decade. It warns widespread rapid changes in the atmosphere, ocean, have occurred, and that while in the near future, global warming is more likely than not to reach 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial times, to avert the worst, deep, rapid and sustained global greenhouse gas emission reductions are needed. The rest of this decade is key. The rest of this decade is whether we can apply the brakes and stop the warming at that level. Now nations around the world have a new challenge to aggressively shift to clean technology and speed up net zero plans by a decade to 2040. It's one thing to, to simply say, well, you know, we want to reach this goal, but we have to give ourselves the, mean, the means to get there. And we, we do that now in Canada for 2050. We will obviously need to, to, to take a, a second long, hard look. For Canada, climate experts say the priority to, needs to, to be cutting emissions and stopping new fossil fuel projects from starting. It's up to our country to decide whether we want to um, invest in the areas where we can be leaders or whether we're going to have an chaotic unmanaged crisis when when the demand for oil and gas collapses. While the report says the world is not on the right track, it does provide some hope, saying not all is lost, that quick action now, Omar, can make a big, lasting difference when it comes to global warming. All right, Annie, thank you. And we are learning the climate will be a priority in next week's federal budget. Not making those investments is also a choice, and a choice I believe would be really irresponsible, really reckless. And let's bring in CTV's Ottawa Bureau Chief Joyce Napier. Joyce, today we heard the Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister Christian Freeland outline the key themes of the government's economic blueprint. What was the key takeaway on green energy? Well, Omar, Krisha Freeland did not mince her words saying Canada can invest aggressively in the clean economy of the 21st century or it can be left behind. Expect that to be the big ticket item in her budget next week, of course, along with health care funding now that the provinces have signed on, and it's $196 billion over the next 10 years. Now, what does the minister mean in terms of dollars when she says invest aggressively? Not much detail on the money allocated to the Green Plan, but it is Canada's answer to what the Biden administration is doing, investing upward of $375 billion on clean energy and attracting all sorts of investments south of the border, and Canada needs to compete. But there will be some inflation relief for low-income Canadians struggling right now, even as inflation drops slowly. Targeted measures, she says, temporary so as to not pour fuel on the inflation fire, the minister saying this budget is all about fiscal restraint.
Omar? And we will find out exactly what that looks like next Tuesday. All right, Joyce, thank you. Overseas, the summit between Chinese leader Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin got underway in Moscow today. The high-level meeting provides a boost to Putin and comes with a warning from Washington. CTV's chief international correspondent Paul Workman reports. An arrival in Moscow deemed so significant it got mandatory coverage on Russian state television. Two powerful countries sharing what they call a no-limits friendship. Two leaders who refer to each other as brothers and the best of chums. And yet China has never recognized Russia's illegal takeover of Crimea. Vladimir Putin, now a formally accused war criminal, greeted his guest with an outpouring of flattery. Over the years, China has made a colossal leap in its development, he said. We're even slightly jealous. Except the war in Ukraine has complicated that relationship, with Russia more than ever wanting and needing China's help, including a steady supply of weapons after suffering heavy battlefield losses. Guns may be on the agenda, but front and center is a vague and widely dismissed Chinese peace plan. We welcome your proposals for ending this acute crisis in Ukraine, said Putin. We are always open to negotiation. As that was happening, European countries offered Ukraine an ammunition lifeline with the promise of a million artillery shells. And in London, justice ministers from 40 countries were warned it will take enormous stamina to track down and convict Russian war criminals. We are friends of humanity, we are friends of legality, and what we oppose are actions which are deemed to be criminal. Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin go back years together, sharing a common threat, the United States. Crucially, this is their first face-to-face -face summit since Russia invaded Ukraine. The Americans weighed in today and harshly on China's peace plan. Don't be fooled, said the U.S. Secretary of State. It may only be a stalling tactic to help Russian forces on the ground. Omar. All right, Paul, thanks. New testimony today at a parliamentary committee from a member of the human rights NGO that flagged the presence of alleged secret Chinese police stations in Canada. CTV's Judy Trin on the revelations. Alleged Chinese police stations all on the RCMP's radar, hidden in a convenience store, a business association, a home, and community immigrant help centers. People may arrive here and the very first person they may see or encounter in one of these so-called service centers is basically an agent for that same Chinese Communist Party. They try to flee. Thank you for allowing me to testify on behalf of Safeguard Defenders. The Spain-based human rights organization was the first to sound the alarm. Safeguard Defenders found the Chinese Communist Party was operating 110 overseas police stations in 53 countries, including at least eight in Canada. Safeguard's Laura Hart says official documentation shows that in just one year, Beijing was able to force more than 221,000 members of its diaspora worldwide to return home to face justice. These people were coerced uh, mainly, you know, by the authorities going after their family members back home in China, threatening them, intimidating them, harassing them. The prime minister has already named a special rapporteur to investigate, but opposition parties want more. The Conservatives tabled a motion to compel Trudeau's most senior advisers to testify, including his chief of staff and the deputy prime minister. The government needs to be open and transparent. They are not. They are stonewalling. They are blocking this investigation. We know that there's a strong effort by a foreign power to influence elections, and that by itself is a serious threat to national security. Parliamentarians will vote on the Conservative motion tomorrow. The bloc is expected to back it, but in order to pass, the motion requires NDP support, and that party hasn't said what it will do. Omar. All right, Judy, thank you. A terrifying return from March break today for students of a Halifax area high school. Just minutes after the start of classes, the school went into lockdown. Here's CTV's Atlantic Bureau Chief, Kreisen Ajkate. On the first day back after the week-long March break, students and staff at this high school northwest of Halifax were suddenly told to go into hold and secure. 
Officers arrived on scene and quickly took one uh, youth, a student at the school, in custody. Police say two staff members were sent to hospital after both were stabbed following an altercation with a student. As soon as it was realized that there was a violent incident taking place, um, there was an announcement made. Students say that hold and secure lasted more than an hour. Hearing like my phone and everyone like texting me what's going on, like it was pretty scary. This student said she and her friend hid in the washroom stalls not knowing what would happen next. I texted my mom and my dad, said I love you and I just put my phone away because I didn't want anything to go off. Outside, all parents could do was wait until the lockdown was lifted. With some upset, social media notified them before the school. All they're saying is they're safe in their classrooms. No, they need to go home and be safe with their parents. I just got a phone call from my daughter saying that they were on lockdown and that they need to be picked up and that they still haven't been dismissed, but there was stabbing. This unconfirmed but widely circulated video appears to show the suspect surrendering to police outside the front doors. Police say the student went to hospital with undetermined injuries and is now in custody. He was yelling things like, my life doesn't matter, your life doesn't matter. Students were dismissed early. Neither school officials nor police would say what weapon was used or which staff members were injured, only that the investigation is ongoing. The school will reopen tomorrow for half a day with guidance counselors and psychologists available on site to help students and staff cope with what happened here. Omar. A very traumatic day for those students. Creason, thanks. Montreal's mayor has vowed to tighten regulations for Airbnbs as the search continues for six people missing after the fatal fire that swept through a historic building that had illegal Airbnbs. So I call them to take their responsibility and I'm taking, I'm, I, I'm, I'm taking the, uh, the vow that I will work with everybody to make sure that there's a better control. Today, crews worked to dismantle the structure's second and third floors to safely search for the victims. Heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Yeah, I mean, I still try to understand what's going on. His friend, 31-year-old Ann Wu, a promising young neuroscientist, is one of those presumed buried in the rubble. One victim's body was recovered yesterday. Airbnb says it is, quote, engaged with the mayor's office. And Quebec police say there is now a third victim of that deadly pickup truck attack one week ago in the community of Amqui. A 41-year-old man died over the weekend after being injured last Monday. A 38-year-old man who was behind the wheel faces charges of dangerous driving, causing death. There are growing calls tonight for a brutal attack to be investigated as a hate crime after a violent swarming assault on a sick international student. Here's CTV's BC Bureau Chief Melanie Neji. In bed and in pain, Gagandeep Singh has barely moved since he was beaten at a BC bus stop. He has uh, several injuries uh, on his back, back, lower back, head. The 21-year-old's friend Hakaran is speaking for him because after being repeatedly punched, it hurts too much to talk. He's also afraid to show his face, fearing his attackers may again come after him. He's, he's feeling very unsafe. The international student also had his turban ripped from his head. They took his turban out and dragged drag him uh, um, around the street by his hairs. The attack happened Friday night in Kelowna. After getting groceries, Singh hopped a bus for home. But while en route, police say a group allegedly began taunting him. We're figuring around 12 to 15 uh, males uh, with some females involved. After asking them to stop, Singh exited the bus but was followed. The Kelowna RCMP are not going to tolerate this kind of uh, behavior. The assault has prompted protest with calls for it to be declared a hate crime, particularly since Singh's turban was allegedly targeted. The distinctive form of headdress is an important symbol of faith. Earlier this month, BC's Human Rights Commissioner released a report highlighting a spike in hate crimes. After analyzing the most recent data, the study found hate incidents in the province in 2021 were 118 percent higher than the previous year. As for Singh, his injuries aren't severe, but he needs time to heal. The doctor said he needed a bed rest for two to three weeks. Not only was Singh's turban ripped off, it was stolen. His friends say that in itself is a hateful act. Melanie Nagy, CTV News, Vancouver. After the break.
I don't know what goes into paying hush money to a porn star. Tense times for Donald Trump, the Diggs, and his defenders. Plus, a famous cast on a mission for better mental health. New York police are preparing for the worst case scenario tomorrow after Donald Trump's unverified claims that he is going to be arrested. But the Manhattan District Attorney has not commented on any timeline and even members of Trump's own party are telling protesters to stay home. CTV's Washington Bureau Chief Joy Malbin reports. Donald Trump has our attention once again. New York City building a ring of steel around the courthouse bracing for possible violence. Fearing a repeat of the deadly January 6th insurrection after Trump urged his supporters to protest, protest, protest. Predicting his own arrest Tuesday as a grand jury decides if Trump should be criminally charged over hush money payments to porn star Stormy Daniels. Trump's former fixer Michael Cohen testified he wrote the checks to silence Daniels about an alleged affair before the 2016 presidential election. But Cohen's former lawyer who testified today said don't trust him. If they want to go after Donald Trump and they have solid evidence, so be it. But Michael Cohen is far from solid evidence. Republicans quick to call this political persecution. Stop going after people because you have political differences. I don't think people should protest this, no. But Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis, a possible presidential rival, couldn't help but take a shot. I don't know what goes into paying hush money to a porn star to, to secure silence over some type of alleged affair. I just, I can't speak to that. From those classified documents found at his Florida home to accusations, he pressured Georgia election officials to overturn the election results. All I want to do is this. I just want to find 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have. Georgia prosecutors now considering bringing racketeering and conspiracy charges against the former president. You think of the mob, because that's what it originally was brought for. So that has to be a real threat that the Trump team has to be considering right now. If Trump is indicted in New York, he'll be fingerprinted, mugshots taken, an unprecedented event for a former president, let alone one who's campaigning for the job again. Omar? All right, Joy, thank you. And days after the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken visited Niger, an American held hostage in West Africa is free. Bonjour, ma famille. 62-year-old Jeff Woodkey, an aid worker from California, was kidnapped by militants six years ago from Niger. French journalist Olivier Dubois, who was abducted in neighboring Mali in 2021, was also free today. The French president was relieved to hear about the release, just as his government barely survived two non-confidence votes and his controversial pension bill became law. Madame Marine Le Pen et 87 members. That triggered a wave of new protests on the streets of France. The new law raises the retirement age from 62 to 64. Still ahead, moments of joy for an ailing movie star. Birthday celebrations for Bruce Willis. A tech giant is planning a second round of mass layoffs. Amazon is slashing 9,000 more jobs in the next few weeks, on top of the 18,000 eliminated in January. The new cuts impact the cloud computing unit Amazon Web Services and gaming platform Twitch. Nexus enrollment centers are reopening at eight Canadian airports by the end of April, allowing trusted travelers to cross the Canada-U.S. border more quickly. Halifax and Winnipeg will be the first to start up again beginning next week, and Toronto and Ottawa will be the last ones to reopen their doors on April 24th. The centres were initially closed three years ago because of the pandemic and remained shut because of a clash over whether U.S. agents could be armed on Canadian soil, creating a major backlog of applications. Just a month after revealing a devastating diagnosis of severe dementia, Bruce Willis's ex, Demi Moore, shared a heartwarming moment of his 68th birthday celebrations this weekend. To you, happy birthday, dear Daniel. 
with wife Emma Hemming and all their kids by his side. You can hear Willis seemingly mocking his family's attempts to harmonize. It was, of course, all in good fun before he blew out the candles. Great to see him in good spirits. After the break. We shouldn't be afraid to ask for help ourselves. Bringing out the stars for an important message. Fans of the award-winning soccer comedy Ted Lasso found their favorite cast in an unusual setting today, ditching the pitch for a podium at the White House. As CTV's Richard Madden reports, the fictional football stars got some face time with the U.S. president to push an important cause. You can't Taking the message from the fictional locker room to the reality of the White House. Hello. The cast of the hit series Ted Lasso used their star power to promote mental health awareness and a reminder to care for each other. So like no matter who you are, no matter where you live, no matter uh, who you voted for, we all probably, I assume, we all know someone who has, uh, or have been that someone ourselves actually, that's struggled, that's felt isolated, that's felt anxious, that has felt alone. Well, tell you what, let's all head to the North Field. Actor let's Jason Sudeikis stars in the show about an American coach of a British soccer team who's open about his troubles with anxiety and depression. It's okay, you're having a panic attack. Just breathe. I got your back. A big part of his coaching style is offering hope and kindness when his players are feeling down. There is something worse out there than being sad, and that is being alone and being sad. Ain't nobody in this room alone. The cast met with President Joe Biden, who's made mental health part of his unity agenda that provides more resources to those who are suffering. While it's easier said than done, I, I, we also have to know that we shouldn't be afraid to ask for help ourselves. And that, that does take a lot, especially when it's something that has such a, a negative stigma to it, such as mental health. Watching from the sidelines, players from the fake team and a surprise guest. Uh, yes, sir. Your familiar face. Hi. Fred Quinn. <laughs> Fake journalist. Yes, sir. <laughs> of course, Sudeikis has his own unique history with Biden, playing him on SNL and reprising that role in a recent sketch. Wait a second. Who are you? Who am I? What do you mean, who am I? I'm you. I'm you from eight years ago, man. The question now... Will he play that role again? No, I, I need I need fake teeth and you know <laughs> and inject it with a lot more hutzpah to pull oh, that off. But what this cast pulled off, a valuable message to those struggling to believe in themselves. Richard Madden, CTV News, Washington. Nice to see them lend some star power to such an important issue. That's a snapshot of this Monday for all of us at CTV National News. Thank you for watching and good night. TV National News, Canada's number one newscast.